Hello friends, we are here with a new screen format, because I realized a lot of item names are quite long and I was blocking myself every week, or every video. Ghost Scepter, that's what we're going to talk about today. It is an item that's a little hard to know when to buy, because it can be good, or it can be really bad. That makes it a bit tough to know when you want to buy it. I also don't buy this item as often as I probably should, so hopefully this video helps all of us. So, as per usual, we don't really care about the attributes and the stats we get from this quite yet. We'll worry about that later. When we're buying items, we're always thinking about what the active form is. That's the cool thing about Dota. So, ghost form, no mana cost, 20 second cooldown. You go ethereal. That comes with several benefits and cons. So, first of all, you cannot be auto attacked, which can be good. Like the carry is trying to, the enemy carry is trying to kill you. You go, you use your ghost scepter, they can't hit you. But you also can't attack, which is usually fine as a support, but there are a couple cases where you want to be able to attack. Say, like a Phoenix Egg or an Undying Tome, Tomb, I don't know why I said it like that. Um, but there are a couple times you do want to attack, and you just need to know that a Ghost Scepter is going to prevent you from doing that. Now you're also 100% physical damage resistant during this time. What that means is that a spell might still be able to target you, but if that spell does physical damage, it won't hurt you. Um, Dazzle's Poison Touch. That's a physical damage spell. So if he casts it on you and you're about to die, you use Ghost Scepter, you actually won't take damage for those four seconds. Very nifty. Now, the part that makes this item tough is the 40% more vulnerability to magic damage. The way this works out, so most heroes, actually all heroes now, have 25% magic resistance by default. So when you use Ghost Form, you end up with negative 5% magic resistance. Now, let's say you had a Glimmer Cape. That puts you passively at 36% magic resistance, down to 10. And if you used Glimmer Cape on yourself, you're at 64%, down to 50%. I put those up there because this is for supports. So it wouldn't be that weird if you had a Glimmer Cape as well, just so you guys know. The main one you have to know is that very first one, where if Ghost Scepter is the first item I buy and I use it, I'm going to be sitting at about negative 5% magic resistance, which is a long way of saying I am extremely vulnerable to magic damage at this time. That's what makes this item complicated, because if you think about the four staff, the glimmer, like, they weren't bad, you know? Usually you use them and it's good. In very rare cases, was it ever bad to use them? say you're ruptured as Bloodseeker, or enemy Bloodseeker ruptures you, you don't really want to force staff yourself, and it can hurt you there. And if you were already dusted, you may not want to go invisible because you'll actually be slowed. But those are very rare cases, and so the items in general were just good. But Ghost Scepter is extremely good against physical right-clicking um, right enemies, but very bad against magic damage. And the issue is, most games have both, and so it's hard to know when do I get this item? Like, am I just going to get myself killed? So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, before we go into that, I will say, in the ultra, ultra, ultra late game, you may be able to upgrade this into an E-Blade. I would almost never consider this. I wouldn't bother thinking about this because in my thousand, uh, thousands of support games, I can't remember ever doing this. Maybe once or twice, but I, I don't remember it. You'll see Meepo do this where... Ghost Scepter is a item just for you. That's another downside to it. Where like Glimmer Cape and Force Staff you can use on yourself or the enemy. Or I'm sorry, your teammates. And the Force Staff you can use on your enemy. But Ghost Scepter is literally just about yourself. Turning it into an E-Blade lets you actually use it to save teammates in rare cases. So say a target gets dueled by LC or Winter Wyvern ults your carry. You can actually E-Blade that target and now they can't right click, they can't hurt themselves, and they can't, your teammates can't like target the carry who got Winter Wyvern ulted. Those are very rare cases. You'll see Meepo do it, but as a support, we don't really need to think about it. But I will throw it out there just so that if you ever do get into like a really late game and you're like, I don't know what to upgrade, sometimes an E Blade is feasible, but it's pretty, it's pretty uncommon. The stats, again, they're kind of nice. Um, you know, a bit more health some general regen, a bit more mana pool. Not really why we buy the item, so not going to worry about it. So three levels I want you to think about in terms of um, 
the ghost form, the going ethereal ghost scepter. So when they only have physical damage or when the damage they do comes from auto attacks. So Clinks, PA, Terrorblade, they're all pure physical damage. I'm pretty sure. Clinks is physical, right? We're going to say it is right now, but actually it doesn't matter if it's magic or not because he needs to auto attack you. And same with Void. So like Bash is magical, but he has to hit you. And so if you're in Ghost Scepter form, Ghost Blade, Ethereal form, why are there so many words for it? When you're in that form, he can't hit you, which means the fact that he has magic damage doesn't matter. So this is when the item is at its peak. Like PA jumps you, it's fantastic because you use it and she just she can't hit you. She doesn't she doesn't do anything. Now you may just survive for four seconds and then it ends and then they kill you. That can be okay because you still bought four seconds of time, which we'll get into a little bit uh later. But in the one of the ideal ways to use this item, if you like happen to be by yourself, it's not like a team fight, and this carry jumps you. You you uh, go ethereal. We're gonna we're gonna that's what we're gonna say. You go ethereal, and then you TP out. Ethereal lasts four seconds, and TP should hopefully only take you three seconds. Make sure you pick the correct target, not somewhere someone else has already gone, and you'll teleport away on time. And these heroes can't really do anything about it. Okay, faceless void could chrono you, but. If you're a position four or five, you're like, okay, I just got solo chronoed. Who cares? So these guys really struggle and they really hate to see a support that buys Ghost Scepter. And they can buy items to target you technically. So they could buy an Abyssal Dagger, which now lets them stun you uh, when you go into a when you go into Ethereal. Again, like if that's what it takes, okay. Like, they had to buy an Abyssal Dagger and they had to use it on me. Like, whatever. Um, and honestly, they still have to wait the four seconds. So it's, like, not a big deal. But then you have another tier where they have some magic damage and they have soft crowd control. So, for example, Troll Warlord. You are close to dying. You go into uh, Ethereal form and then he kills you with the magic damage he has. It's, like, a very... <laughs> you had to be really low... But it can happen. The other, the other case is that, you know, you go into this ethereal form and you're hoping to survive, right? Not just die after the four seconds. So you're trying to run away or something. So if they can slow you in that time, it doesn't feel so good because it's like, okay, I'm still going to die after four seconds. Whereas maybe a glimmer would have kept me alive by turning me invisible. I have that same amount of time. Plus they don't know where I am and I managed to get away. Whereas they see you and they're just like, all right, I'll wait for you. Four seconds. I'm, I'm here. And then they kill you when you're done. So if they have some kind of soft crowd control to um, slow you, to silence you so you can't cast spells or anything to, to stun them and run away, or to, you know, if you had a blink or something, whatever, it doesn't feel as great. But if you think about it, their main source of damage is still physical damage, right? Bloodseeker, Troll, Ursa. The magic damage they have is like, it's a minor consideration. We, we want to consider it, but it's not really a big deal. Like, it's still fine to buy it against these guys. But it is a little below, like, a PA who is, like, straight physical damage. I'll, okay, her dagger does slow you, technically, but... Forget it! <laughs> and then the last, the last category we're going to talk about is heavy magic damage and hard crowd control. So talking about trying to escape, like, let's look at Sven. You go ethereal and you start TPing away. Sven just stuns you. And then he kills you afterwards. So it doesn't feel as good, whereas like Ursa can't really stop you until he buys an Abyssal Dagger. But Sven just has a stun. Sven also has a level 15 talent which dispels, which will remove Ethereal. So against Sven in particular, it is... Wait till he hits 15 and see what talent he takes. If he doesn't take the Dispel talent, then you can get a Ghost Scepter. But if he does, then you're going to... like It's not going to help you against Sven, really. Although it does prevent you from taking Cleave damage, which is kind of nice. Now, against other people, so, like, Sven is physical damage, but he has the sun. But the other guys are all magic, right? Queen of Pain does auto-attack you a bit, but she still does a lot of magic damage. And if they go on you, let's say Quat blinks on you, and you go into um, Ethereal, she's just gonna hit... She's gonna use her spells on you, and you take a ton of damage, and you're just gonna die. So, it doesn't help you. It's not good. 
Skywrath, does his gameplay change at all if you go into Ghost Scepter form? No. It's going to Q, W, E, Alt, Q, Atos, Q, Alt, whatever. Whatever his combo is, you're just dead. He right-clicks you like three times in his combo. All of his damage is magic. And so Ghost Scepter does nothing for you. We don't want to bite against those heroes. But we want to bite against these heroes. But you'll notice a game might very well have a Clinks and a Queen of Pain. So where does that put us? Puts us in a tough spot, guys. It makes it difficult to make this video because at the end of the day, you, you guys have to decide on your own. It comes down to how are you dying in these fights? Is Queen of Pain always hunting you out while Clinks is doing other things? Then a Ghost Scepter isn't going to save you because Queen of Pain is the one who's killing you. But what if it's the other way? What if Queen of Pain has been ignoring you and Clink's the one who keeps finding you on your own and he kills you? Then a Ghost Scepter is pretty good. It kind of just has to be this decision you make based on each game. Because some games might have four physical damage dealers and one magic dealer, but the magic dealer is the one killing you every time. And so, in theory, Ghost Scepter is a good item in that game. But for that particular game, it's not, because the magic dealer is the one who is killing you. You guys are going to have to figure that out on your own. I'm sorry. I don't, know. I don't know how much to help you on that. But what I will say is that we can go into here, and we can talk about some of these heroes individually and see where we're at. Real quick before that, I'm going to cut this in. It also depends on your hero's playstyle and to yours to an extent, but it's really about the hero. Ghost Scepter is a survivability item at the end of the day. Because you can't use it on your teammates, you can't use it on the enemy, you know, there's no saving aspect, there's no aggressive aspect. It is just about yourself surviving. Now, by surviving, you might be able to play aggressively or save your teammates, but that first step is just surviving. You have different options for surviving. For example, positioning. Someone like Ancient Apparition, who has incredibly long range, some might say global, he can just sit way in the back lines. And if he is against a team like that has a lone druid, a team that's just going to push the front line slowly, um, then you just stand in the back and you survive that way. Lone druid's not really going to blink to the back line and kill you, so you don't really need the ghost scepter. But what if you're against someone like Clinks, who looks in the back line to kill people? Well, now if you're Ancient Apparition, you can't really stand in the back because someone on the enemy team, someone who looks for people in the back. So now you have to be a little closer to the fight, which is unfortunate because now you're closer to the four enemy heroes. Plus, when Clinks doesn't find anyone in the back, he's also going to move forward. You have lost the option of staying in the back line for survivability, and now you're getting closer to needing a Ghost Scepter. Now, some heroes don't have the option of positioning. Someone like Dazzle does, but less so to Ancient Apparition's extent. So like Dazzle needs to be close enough to use Grave, but he might hide for a bit, come out when needed, cast Grave, heal, whatever, and then he's going to run around and like try to survive that way, get back to the back lines again, um, and maybe he can survive that way. Maybe he needs the Ghost Scepter. Um, it'll depend on the game for him. But he like he has some extent of like running around to survive. Heroes that need to channel in fights don't have that. So someone like Witch Doctor or Crystal Maiden, they can start in the back lines. But let's say Witch Doctor, Paralyzing Cask, Maldict, very short range spells. Voodoo Restoration only heals like around him. Death Ward doesn't have a long range. And to channel it, you have to be quite close. Plus, you're going to draw attention to yourself because if the enemy team doesn't have a way to cancel your channel, they need to kill you or get out. Uh, what this means is that, you know, if you stand in the back throwing out casks and maldicts, yeah, you can, you can play like Dazzle. But at some point, you have to commit, sit there, and channel your death ward. Sometimes you might have a team to cover for you in that case, but other times you don't. So, Witch Doctor is someone who doesn't have the option of staying in, like way in the back like Ancient Apparition or like moving around like Dazzle if he wants to use his ultimate and you want to use your ultimate, you may need a Ghost Scepter because you're going to be at the front line, you're going to be in harm's way, and like you still need to survive to channel your spell. So, that's what I want to emphasize on that is that you need to consider 
in terms of survivability, like uh, how are you at risk? Um, and are you someone who can survive by doing something else, by like being in the back line or like surviving by just having a lot of magic resistance, resistance, surviving by just being a really tanky hero like Ogre. You know, they don't really need a Ghost Scepter sometimes because they're just so tanky. They're really high armor, high health, and it's like, I don't need to be immune from physical damage. I just take very little physical damage. Um, you need to identify what you need to survive from. And so the people who like to buy Ghost Scepter tend to be these squishy heroes who need to be near the front, and they don't really have the option of tanking up buying a lot of armor they don't have the option of just hiding way in the back line they know they need to get in harm's way or they like harm will find them like in the back line then when you cannot avoid the damage and you cannot just endure the damage you need the ghost scepter to just be immune to the physical damage so this is actually all the heroes i didn't break it down into like only think about these heroes, never think about these heroes. Because to me, it is an equation of like, these are the five heroes in the game. Let me think about each of them. And how am I dying? Who is always going on me? Usually, you're buying it for the carry. Either the enemy carry, mid, or off lane. One of the core heroes. Whoever is going on you and killing you. This happens more in some games than others. So like, Klinks is a he was a good example. Because he just runs around invis, and he kills you. And that's where a Ghost Scepter is really good, because... You use it and you TP out, and he can't he can't really do anything about it. He doesn't really buy items to deal with that until way late. Like maybe he buys a site. Um, so at this point, if you understand the core concepts of like what I said, like, oh, against physical damage dealers, like if PA is the one who's always killing me, it's good. And if like Tinker's the one killing me, it's bad. If you can understand that, you're good. If you want, we're about to go through every single hero in this game, and I'm gonna say like my thoughts on it, whether it's good or bad. I have divided it into three categories generally right here. But like Amadon and Io, for example, real quick, technically it's good against them, but like, are they really the ones killing you? Not, not usually. So although the item is good against those heroes, it's not really when you need to buy it. But occasionally there are games where Abaddon or Io are played as core and they are the issue and they're right clicking you. And so you should still be able to identify that like, oh, this is a ghost, this is a good ghost scepter game. Um, so yeah, I don't know how to help you guys more than that because the others were like a lot more clear, right? Four staff, you use it on clockwork, whatever, like whoever we had in this video, right? You you use it on, you have it for these heroes. It's really good and it's really good against these and it's really good against these. But it's, for me, it's something a lot more vague. I created another one, but I didn't fill it out because I, I didn't, I couldn't figure it out. So if that's all you need, feel free to stop watching here. But if you want to know more details specifically, then... Continue, because that's what we're going to do right now. So, Abaddon, he right-clicks you. He has some magic damage, but it's not really how he kills you. So if you look at it, yeah, he can mist coil you. And yeah, if, he shield, if his shield breaks, it can get you. But if he's going to kill you, it's probably from right-clicks. And so it's kind of okay to get it against Abaddon. Um, but Abaddon is not usually someone looking for supports, so he's not usually the main reason we're thinking about it. Same with Io has some magic damage, but if you're against a core IO or even a support IO amplifying a core, you're not really dying from spirit magic damage. You're dying from the right clicks. So that's that. Now Legion, you have to be a little fast. So her overwhelming odds can burst you quite heavily if you happen to be ghost um, in ghost form next to your teammates or something. You do have to be a little careful on that. But if you see her blink on top of you and you know she's about to duel, you can pop the ghosts the Ghost Scepter, she ults you, and then look at her level 1 duration. Four seconds. That's how long Ghost Form lasts. So, factor in a bit of time, let's say you Ghost Form and then she duels you half a second later, you're still wasting most of the duration where Legion herself cannot kill you. Now, maybe her teammates are like Lena and she kills you. You know, that's a different issue. But at least Legion cannot solo kill you throughout the game. As long as you can react fast enough. There's that. Lifestealer. He's a very good example of when to buy Ghost Scepter. He's a carry who's heavily physical damage, and he just runs down supports. Or he runs down whoever he wants, but, you know, why not kill supports? That's kind of fun as a carry. So he just chases you down, and take a look at the rage duration. Maybe I should have said this sooner. This is a, this is a bonus for you guys that stuck through it. The duration of Ghost Blade, Ghost Scepter, <sighs> Ghost Scepter is four seconds. If the enemy carry or whoever's chasing you 
has this very short timing window that you can waste out and four seconds is relatively a lot, then that's really good. So let's say Rage. Rage at max duration is six seconds, a little higher with the uh, with the talent, but still four seconds out of his Rage duration is a lot. And if you can waste that, he hates that. He hates being vulnerable without Rage. And if he spends four seconds waiting for you to come out of Ghost Form to then kill you, like that's pretty good. But compare it to someone like CK, who technically Ghost Form is really good against Phantasm, or like good against CK because he's like mostly physical damage, but it lasts 30 seconds. So you're only wasting like four seconds out of 30, which is still something, but it's, it's like not, not as good as against like a BKB charge or like a Rage charge or the Rage duration. So that's when that's really good. That kiting aspect and you're wasting their time. Broodmother, usually pretty good against her. Um, the spiders won't be able to hit you, but I will note Broodmother tends to be, in a good Broodmother game, she tends to roll the game um, to the point where Ghost Scepter won't really change that. And she will be rich enough to buy whatever she needs. She can buy a nullifier if she really wants to, to deal with the Ghost Scepter. So it can be good, but she's also a hero where she like may not care at all. Clinks, I would say it's pretty good against him. He's also a hero who could buy Nullifier, but that's usually quite late into the game. So you should still survive at least a couple fights. Plus, his um, like when he gets the Aghanims and has that burning army pop up, and uh, with the uh, the new talent, I'm not used to it. it <laughs> he's been changed around so much. But he has those skeletons, and it's really annoying because they just throw out some passive damage on you, and like they could actually kill you. Um, similar to Gyro and Medusa, who are on here, who they just attack everything around them. They don't even have to focus you as a support, but you just get hit, and you can actually die from it. And so that's when Ghost uh, Scepter is pretty good, so that you can actually participate in fights without getting hit by these random things and just dying. Um, because as a support, you don't really need to right-click usually. You're there to cast spells. And you can still cast spells when you're in Ghost Scepter form. <laughs> We're going to refer to it like 15 different ways. Drow Ranger, very similar to Clinks, where she doesn't like hunt you out as often as, say, a Clinks would because he has the invis and move speed. But still, she is pretty much straight physical damage. And, you know, she can get like a Maelstrom, which will bounce to you. But that's not really how she's going to kill you. She's going to kill you by auto-attacking you like five times and procking her ult and destroying you. But you can go Scepter, and you'll be safe. Faceless Void. Here's another guy who the duration is really good. If you can go Scepter right before he uses Chronosphere, it's very uncommon for a Faceless Void to buy Nullifier, which means he just can't hit you during Chrono, and he hates that. Now, of course, he he, he usually doesn't Chrono support solo like in the late game. Um, it's usually like on a team fight, and then he's probably focusing a core or something. Um, and it's also hard to react in time to the Chronosphere, depending on how he does it. Um, so sometimes an Aeon Disc is a little better than Ghost Scepter, but that's for a different item video. So just know that it can be pretty good against Faceless Void. Gyro, so I already hinted at it. Gyro actually does have a decent amount of magic damage, and he even has a stun. But in my experience, as a squishy support, it's usually not the magic damage that kills you from Gyrocopter because he's usually not on top of you. Like, if he's on top of you, you were probably in a bad position. This is, like, right next to him. The rocket takes a long time to go, and you can even break it. And same with the call down, where, yeah, it's annoying, but it's, it's probably not enough to kill you on its own, um, even amplified by the Ghost Scepter. What'll kill you is this flat cannon when he has a ton of items and he has like an Aghanim shooting off random hits. And he buys a Divine Scepter, a Divine Rapier. My, my words. And he pops Flat Cannon. He auto attacks the carry. He's focused on the carry. And you just die to the side. And he's like, oh, cool. I got a double kill. I didn't even see the support. It's so annoying, right? To just die like that, walking up, trying to stun him. And you get killed by Flat Cannon. That's when the Ghost Scepter is really good. You pop it and it won't hit you. And you can survive those like five random attacks that would have killed you otherwise. Juggernaut has magic damage, which could very well kill you if you get Ghost Sceptered. So you don't want to use it when he has the Blade Fury ready. What you want to have it for is Omni Slash, 
because Omni Slash is a really big cooldown, and if he wastes the whole duration on you while you're Ghost Sceptered, it won't do anything. So this is why I think Juggernaut is still in the good category, despite the fact that, like, yeah, Blade Fury, Blade Fury would really hurt if you were Ghost Formed. You save it for when it bounces to you, or when he you see him ult and it could bounce to you. That is when you pop um, the Ghost Scepter. And if he doesn't get a kill with his ult, the team fight is already heavily in your favor, depending on how the game's going, like if it's close. Um, because his ult is kind of meant to get like this free kill and then continue the fight 4v5 from there. So if you can waste that as a support with your item, that's really, really good. Lone Druid almost... Duh. Right now, the build is not um, Radiance. So against Radiance, Ghost Form is like, ah, it feels bad because you're going to take a lot of burn damage. But at the same time, you can survive that amount of burn damage. It's a couple hundred, but you, you'll you have the health for it. And really what will kill you is the right clicks. And so even if the Radiance build comes back into more popularity, like I still think it's pretty good because usually what gets you killed is the bear hits and roots you. And then the two of them hit you. Maybe just the bear hits you. But right now it's a bit more common to do like a Mask of Madness, Deso, Basher, MKB build, whatever, which all relies on the right clicks. And that's why Ghost Scepter is pretty good. And if he fears you, I mean, you were trying to run away anyway, so it's like, it doesn't feel that bad. Uh, it feels a little bad because it can cancel your teleports, but still. Medusa, same with Gyro, the split shot, where it's just, it's so annoying. Um, she's not even focused on you and you just die. The Mystic Stake will bounce around a bit, hurt a little bit, but not enough to deter. You know, one magic spell damage, one spell that does magic damage, from a hero is like not enough to say like okay i i won't get a ghost scepter it's when they like straight output magic damage and the stone gaze as well if you know you're about to get petrified you can pop the ghost scepter and that way the split shot won't kill you and you won't take that amplified match uh physical damage because you don't take physical damage pa likes jump and kill supports really quickly right you see the dagger coming in you can just go scepter and back away you see the dagger and she blinks on top of you ghost scepter she might abyssal you, but at least you can waste a bit of time. Because oftentimes she will BKB to kill those supports. And if you can waste those four seconds, that's really good. Phantom Lancer, a hero that doesn't usually buy Nullifier, heavily right click focused. We're going to start like skipping through some of it because I think you're getting the point. Ricky, right click focused. The reason I usually emphasize four staff is because you can save teammates and because. You can't cast spells in smoke screen. So even if you use the Ghost Scepter in the smoke screen, he won't kill you then. But if you can't cast a spell, by the time you walk out of the Ghost Scepter, like you have very little duration left, and he's probably just going to kill you after. That's why I like the four staff, because usually the combo is like smoke screen, diffusal, E on top of you, and then you four staff out of all of that. Now he can just blink on top of you again. That's annoying. At least you used another W charge from him, and he doesn't have his other spells because you got out of all of that. Um, and so I think four staff is a little better. Plus, you have that utility to save your teammates, whereas you can survive those four seconds, and maybe you'll even survive after that, but it's only yourself. Um, so can still be a good item. If there are other heroes who are killing you through um, physical damage, then yeah, I might pick the Ghost Scepter over the four staff. That's why it is a very much like game-dependent decision that's why we're making these videos so you can try to factor that in ta another hero all physical damage blinks on top of you kills you but not when i have ghost scepter and i blink and survive or i, I uh ethereal and survive for a little bit tb like all physical damage he can sunder you but that actually won't kill you someone else might kill you but that can be a concern don't you know don't walk up to him and Ghost Scepter thinking like, oh, he can't kill me. He could Sunder you and survive. Um, so still keep your distance. Um, but this lets you at least approach. Because if he has meta going and you like try to walk up to Spellcast and he just hits you from far away and kills you um, because a late game Terrorblade is terrifying, um, that can be really annoying. And the other thing with a lot of these Illusion Heroes that I'll mention now, because I forgot to mention it earlier, um, like TB, PL, who can just send Illusions at you and it there's like no risk to them but those illusions do like half your health because you're just the support player like stop bullying me you can go scepter and the illusions will hopefully um like they won't kill you in those four seconds but hopefully your teammates will help you or those illusions will die you know especially in the phantom lancer case 
um, the illusions will just go away and you'll survive a little longer. You do have to play a little careful because it's on cooldown now, but you know, 20 seconds for no mana is um, something you can use quite frequently. Troll Warlord, yeah, just pop it. Who cares that he has a bit of magic damage? He, You want to waste his battle trance duration. Um, the fervor stacks make him attack someone else so that he loses the fervor. Um, he's also a hero who likes to BKB and needs to get something done in that time. A lot of these carries are. Um, that's why a general rule is like int heroes who tend to be magic damage, E Blade or Ghost Scepter is not good. Agility heroes who tend to be carries that are focused around right clicking, Ghost Scepter tends to be pretty good. And then Strength is pretty moderate. You'll see that pattern as we go through this. Ursa, in rage or BKB, wants to kill you in that time. If he can't kill you, he doesn't like that. Go Scepter. Enchantress, crazy amount of damage when she was a core. Right now, she's more of a support, but I, it wouldn't be that weird to see her transition back to a core in a future patch. So just keep in mind that all of her damage right now comes from Impetus. And I need to double check. Impetus is pure damage, but I'm pretty sure that because you're E-bladed, you're ethereal, it won't matter. So I checked most other interactions, but we'll check this real quick. Oh, oh no, we can't do it like that. The auto attack has to be on the way. Ah, we didn't do it right. What am I doing? Yeah, so you're not going to take any damage because you can't take right clicks. I was pretty sure, but I didn't want to lie to you guys. So there we go, tested on the spot. Woo! Now something you want to be careful of is that enchant is a basic dispel. So she could just kill you. I forgot that it had that. So actually, she's not on this. I was thinking, I was briefly debating, do I edit this out? Not good. I'll admit fault, guys. I'm not perfect. So Enchantress has been relegated down because... She can dispel you, but it is quite a long cooldown. So if she has used it on someone else, you might be okay. Actually, it's probably just straight bad, to be honest. It's probably just not what you want. Ah, uh, but it kind of is. It's like, okay, we'll put it in moderate. Because if you can Ghost Blade and not take some pure damage, like, that's pretty good. Especially if she, like, um, Hurricane Pikes you and then throws all her stuff and then you Ghost Scepter. She's out of range to... She's not in range to use Enchant and dispel you. So... I think she's moderate. All right, now we're in the moderate category. Alchemist. Chemical Rage lasts a bit. So this is kind of that same idea where you can waste a bit of his time, but it, it lasts a bit, so it's not as good. Plus the fact that he has unstable concoction. You're not going to take damage from it, but he can stun you. He does frequently build Radiance, so that'll burn you the whole time. Um, so yeah, it's like okay against him, but... Not the best, because he does get rich so fast. He'll also get, like, a, a Abyssal Dagger really quickly. He could buy a Nullifier if he needs to really quickly. Um, so it doesn't feel as good against Alchemist. You know, for for these other carry heroes, they find out you get a Ghost Scepter, and they're like, ugh, I still have to finish this BKB first, and then maybe I'll get a Nullifier after that. But it still takes them. That's, like, 8,000 gold that they have to get. Alchemist, he sees that you have a Ghost Scepter, and he's like, all right. In two minutes, I'll get my nullifier, and then I'll just keep killing supports. Because he just farms so fast, so it just doesn't feel as good against him. But it can be okay. Axe, if you see him coming in to call you, and you can use the Ghost Scepter, you won't auto-attack him, so you won't, um, you won't add to the possibility of him proccing counter Helix. Now, if he calls multiple people or creeps around you, you'll still take the damage from Helix, um, but it's actually pure damage, so it won't be amplified. Battle Hunger is magic, and that's pretty annoying, but again, you can probably survive for a little bit through the um, duration. The Bristleback is a hero whose most most of his damage comes from physical. Um, he could buy a Radiance, but like if he's just killing you with physical, Ghost Scepter's okay. The issue with Bristleback is that he's not a hero like Lifestealer who's on this timer. So like if Bristleback runs around you for four seconds, he's like, okay, I'm still building charges. And in fact, I don't even have to look at you. I'll start casting the spells on the target next to you and I'm still hitting you with the cool spray to build stacks and the second the ethereal ends I'll turn around hit you three times and then go back to what I was doing whereas he is like oh 
I got to run to the other target who's like 500 units away, and then I'll have to run 500 units back. Rage is like running out. It's so annoying. He's like, I'm just standing between them casting W. So he doesn't really care. And he's not a hero that's usually dependent on BKB because he's such a tanky hero. He just, he actually wants to be in the fight and take up attention. And so the Ghost Scepter doesn't feel as good against him. It doesn't feel like you'll get away because he can slow you and because you're not really limiting what he wants to do for the most part. It's still a little annoying not to be able to kill your target quickly. So, like, you could Ghost Scepter and then escape. Um, and that is pretty annoying for Bristleback because he doesn't often buy um, items that can cancel that. Like, he doesn't really buy Yules, Atos, Scepter. Um, I'm sorry, Abyssal Dagger. I don't know why I said Scepter. Um, he tends to buy these, like, tank-up items, which don't have a way to cancel. Now, CK, he's kind of similar to Bristleback because he has Reality Rift, which helps him reposition so if he goes on you now if he uses reality rift on you that could be okay but say he just hits you and then you go scepter and he's like okay i'll just reality rift to this target over here and then i'll be able to reality rift back to the support to kill that guy next still it's not bad like to waste a bit of time um, even though he has the stun and you might be stunned for the full duration it's possible um, at least he can't kill you with all his illusions at that moment and maybe you'll be able to get a spell or two off Lycan is in the moderate category. Does that surprise you? Because he is heavily physical. Guess why? Now, yes, he does have the max move speed, so it's kind of like Bristleback and Chaos Knight, where it's like, okay, I'll just run over here, and then I'll run back real quick. I don't really care. Um, he doesn't feel that issue with kiting. That's true, but that's not why he's in this category. The reason he's in this category is because Lycan frequently builds Helm of the Dominator or Necro Book 3. And both of those items can be used to dispel you. The Necro Book, the Archer can use it. And for the Helm of the Dominator, you can get a um, Seder Tormentor? I forget which one it is. It's the little guy, the little spellcaster. Um, he can actually dispel. And so a good Lycan will see Ghost Scepter, and he will pick up that creep if he has a Helm of the Dominator. Or if he has the Necro Book, he'll just be ready to switch to that range unit the range necro and then purge you and then kill you however many people don't know that or they're not good enough to make use of it and so you'll ghost for them and they'll just be annoyed and they'll go somewhere else and they won't they won't have the micro ability or the knowledge to purge you or to pick up that um dispel creep and other people will choose to pick like the uh, alpha wolf instead because that's really good or the centaur um so just creeps in general, which are annoying to deal with. Um, and that's why Lycan is actually in this moderate category rather than good or bad. Um, because it's technically nothing, something he doesn't have to worry about, but many people don't know. So you can give it a shot. Let's move to Magnus. Magnus, magical damage spells... But with the Empower and the right click, um, he can kill you. If you can Ghost Form when he ults, so let's say he blinks and ults all of you, and his plan is to like try to cleave kill all of you. If you Ghost Formed, you won't die to the cleave and you won't die to the, the right clicks because he can't target you. But your teammates might be dead, and at that point, you know, it's like, uh, he'll just kill me after. So, I don't know, it doesn't feel the best. He has ways to uh, cancel your teleports, so... You know, it's like, it's moderate. That's what this category is. Mars, he'll, he won't be able to, uh, like, do his crit on you, but you'll still be trapped in Arena of Blood, and if he stuns you against the wall, um, you're going to be uh, taking a bunch of magic damage, and if you try to Ghost, Ghost Scepter and TB out, he can just stun you. So, not the best, but it's also kind of okay. Night Stalker, can cancel your TP, has some magic damage, but still the way he kills you is from right clicks, so you'll at least have four seconds to um, waste his time. Dark Ascension, though, does last quite a while. However, this hero may end up buying BKB, so it's nice to waste out those durations. So, again, moderate. Omni Knight. Omni Knight is weird. So the purification still hurts you because it's pure damage. It won't be amplified, though. The aura will prevent you from escaping in terms of running away, but you could just TP out, and Omni Knight... 
sometimes buys Yule, so he might be able to cancel it, might not be able to. But the reason it can be really good against Omni Knight is because Omni Knight is not this frontline killer. He's not hunting down supports. He's being annoying, and so he's not directly dealing with you. But what usually happens in a team fight is that he uses Guardian Angel on everyone. And for that duration, they go ham on you if they're like doing okay. They might use it to escape, but they may use it to just like try to kill as much as they can. That's where having a Ghost Scepter can be good because you waste some of the duration of Guardian Angel. So the carry who suddenly, the enemy carry who suddenly felt invincible and dove you, and then you use Ghost Scepter, and then they're like, oh, I'm out of position, and then Guardian Angel is about to end. I have killed myself. Um, so that's where it can be good. It's not really about the Omni Knight. It's about the fact that he enables other people to come kill you, um, and you want to waste out that time. Slardar, it's okay against because Slardar, you know, he he's mostly physical, and the minus armor as well makes you very susceptible to physical damage, which you dodge by going ethereal. But it's never going to be an escape from Slardar for the most part, because he'll probably just crush you if you try to TP, and if you try to run, he's just faster than you. So, you'll at least survive for four seconds. There's always that. Tidehunter, okay. You know, it doesn't stop you from getting ravaged, but, um, you know, he'll have physical damage that you can dodge, but he can still slow you, so you're probably not getting away from him, but you'll probably survive for four seconds. Tusk has ways to cancel TP with a snowball, but oftentimes what might happen is you see him target you with a snowball, and so right before the snowball hits you, that is when you ghost form, and then he won't be able to use um, Walrus Punch or Ice Shards on you on that time, which is usually the way he might kill a support, um, is to snowball on them, Ice Shard, Walrus Punch, hit them with Tag Team. Um, so you can like dodge part of his kit, but then other parts will still be annoying to you. Tusk is usually played as a support and not focused on that though, like killing supports. So that's why it's like moderate. Wraith King does have a stun, does frequently build Radiance. Um, he's also here that isn't quite so time limited because he has this reincarnation. He's like, okay, if I die, it's like, whatever, I'll come back. But he's still, he's still someone who's susceptible to kiting. And that's where Ghost Scepter is good to get him kited. Oh, we got to speed up, guys. 40 minutes and we are like so many heroes left. AM, he likes to blink and kill supports. Can't do it if you go Ghost Scepter. AM is a little tough because he blinks abyssals you really quickly and you have to have really good reactions to be able to Ghost Scepter in time. But if you do, he won't be able to do anything to you. Bloodseeker just sprints up to you right-clicking, right? Um, doesn't always buy a way to cancel TPs. So if he ruptures you, you can Ghost Scepter TP out and the blood right. Pure damage, so you're not worried about that. Um, yeah. Bounty Hunter. If he's a core, he can be very annoying to deal with physical damage-wise because he just, uh, you know, he does a ton. Um, so you can survive for four seconds. Unfortunately, you're probably not going to get away because this gives him move speed. This gives him a way to cancel TPs. And this gives him vision of you. So if you're alone and you get Ghost Sceptered, or if you're alone and Bounty Hunter finds you, Ghost Scepter will give you a bit of time, but you're still going to die probably. Um, but that time might be enough for people to rotate in and help you, so that's why you get it. Um, and Bounty Hunters, in teamfights, Bounty Hunter doesn't usually... Oh, that's not fully true. Yeah, I guess in a in a team fight, a core Bounty Hunter does kind of pick off supports. And that's where like the Ghost Scepter can be good too. So Monkey King, um, really nice in Wukong's command because they won't hit you. Um, but unfortunately, you're probably not going to get away because he does have a stun. You're not going to take damage from it, but you're not going to get away. And he can just chase you with Tree Dance, which does do a little bit of damage to you. So it's like okay against him. Pretty good in the alt, I will say that. Naga, you're not going to get away from her. She can target you with Ensnare. She has to wait to uh, actually like hit you and kill you, but... And it actually kind of goes in the other way, where like usually you're wasting other people's time, but during Song, she can't hit you anyways. So she can actually use Song to waste your Ghost Scepter duration and then kill you after that. Um, now, she's not going to commit that for just a support usually, but it's more like it just happens in a team fight. Pango, Swashbuckle can't hit you, can't bash you. That part's nice. Um, Rolling Thunder can still stun you. Shield Crash is not enough magic damage to really threaten anyone's life for the most part. 
Um, so you don't have to worry about that. It's more that you can still just be rolling thundered. However, at the least, you won't be like swashbuckled into ulted because you can dodge it if you Ghost Scepter fast enough. Um, and because Ghost Scepter doesn't reduce your move speed, you can then try to just run around and dodge the rolling thunder. Um, and if he has like an Ags, you at least won't take a ton of random damage from him like shield crashing. Well, you'll take damage from the shield crash, but you won't take it from like the uh, stuff that shoots out from the side, uh, the swashbuckles. So it's like okay against him. Where are we? Razor, same deal, has some magic damage, but at least he can still steal damage from you. But the thing is, Razor is usually, he's an anti-carry, which means he's targeting your cores. Um, so it's kind of weird if he like links you. And like, yeah, he'll get the damage, but you're like, all right, I was just a Crystal Maiden. I wasn't going to hit you anyways, dude. I'm just going to cast spells, which you still can. Um, Slark, you're not going to get away because he has pounds, but at least he can't hit you and gain a bunch of charges. Um, so that is where that's pretty good. Um, but a four staff might be nicer because you can just get away from the pounce. Same with a razor, where it's like the four staff is better because you can just get away from static link and you can also save teammates. Sniper, it's kind of weird where sniper can't like kill you because he can't right click, but he could just assassinate you. And if you're under shrapnel, you're going to take a decent amount of damage. Um, but it's overall okay. Spectre, it's irritating against Spectre because she ults and the illusion does like half your health. And you don't want to commit Ghost Scepter yet there because you're like, I want to wait for the real one to come in. But the real one comes in and you're at half health at that point. So she just continues to Radiance burn you and you Ghost Scepter, but then she just Spectral Daggers you and then just waits it out next to you and then kills you. And it's, it's annoying. It doesn't feel great to have it against Spectre unless you're already tanky. Um, that's my own experience with it. Um, so it's like, okay, you at least won't... She probably won't pick you off too easily if you have a Ghost Scepter. You can use it like as soon as she ults, and maybe that'll dissuade her a bit. But at the same time, then she's like, oh, he's wasted his ethereal duration. I'll go to him and kill him. So it's tough because she does frequently buy Radiance. You're going to take a lot of damage from the illusion, and then she's going to come in and probably finish the job. Vengeful Spirit, not really a core. Um, when she is, that is when Ghost Form can be good because you, uh, you just don't take right-click damage from her. As a support, she's not... Like, she's not joining the carry, diving you, right? Like, a PA blinking onto you and killing you, that's what you have to be annoyed for and worried about. Um, whereas Venge doesn't really do that. She stays in the back line, and so you don't fully have to worry about her stun or her swap. But it can be a way, like, if you're trying to swap, if you're trying to E-Blade, go Scepter TP out, she does kind of have the range with swap to um, cancel that. Weaver, mostly physical damage. Yeah, he has some magic from Shikuchi, not really what kills you. Dazzle won't do much damage to you because he's all physical in terms of his spells. Um, but a core Dazzle does frequently build Necro Book, which can purge you. Um, so there's that. As a support, though, you don't have to worry about that, and it's kind of like, okay. Or actually, it's like pretty good. Death Prophet, you won't take damage from Exorcism, but you will take increased damage from Spirit Siphon and Crypt Swarm. So depends what you're dying from is what that comes down to. It's actually decent against Nature's Prophet, because he is mainly a right-clicking intelligence hero. And that's how he kills people, is he, like, TP, silences you, maybe scythe, and then kills you. Um, so if you can Ghost Scepter first, that's pretty good. Downside is, you might be, you might be like, found by a Clinx, and so you use Ghost Scepter in a team fight, and then a random Nature's Prophet, Wrath of Nature, hits you, and it, like, destroys you because you got unlucky, and it's, like, one of the last bounces and has a ton of damage. So that's where it doesn't, like, he doesn't have to be looking at you. It could be just totally random, and it could do a ton of damage to you. Um, so be careful. Outworld Devourer cannot auto-attack and build charges with his orb, but he could just astral you and waste out your Ghost Scepter duration. Um, at the same time, if you make him use a, an astral charge on you instead of a core or instead of saving someone, that's kind of okay. But he'll probably just sanity clips you while you're E like ghost scepter he may not use it on just like a solo support but like say you're in a team fight and you try to use it to save yourself he's just gonna like ult the entire squad um and your ghost scepter's not gonna save you so kind of protects you from getting like three hit from his arcane orb when he has a ton of mana but he has other abilities to deal with it silencer likes to steal a ton of intelligence do a bunch of damage um but at least he can't right click you when he's a core um, but he does do magic damage from his other spells. But those are probably not enough to kill you. Usually he kills you through the right clicks. 
Visage. You're not going to get away from Visage because the familiars have a stun, and he does have a slow, and he can do some damage to you with this, but at least the familiars won't kill you for four seconds. And that's kind of what gets you, is he, like, solar crests you, and the familiars gun you down. But with the Ghost Scepter, you can buy yourself a bit of time. Warlock. Why is Warlock in here? <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um... So Fatal Bonds reflects whatever damage type you get. So if his team is almost all physical damage and your Fatal Bonds, that means it reflects Fatal Bond or physical damage to you, which you can dodge. But if his team does magical damage or pure damage, it gets reflected as those forms and will damage you. Um, so you can keep that in mind. Shadow Word, not really something you have to be super worried about in terms of damage from the Ghost Scepter, but it is a little annoying. You're not going to get out of his slow. And then the the Golem has AoE magic damage hurting you, but at least the Golem can't hit you. I guess that's why he's under moderate. I made this list like an hour ago, and I don't quite remember why I put him here. He's kind of neutral, right? Like, if I saw a Warlock, I don't think I need a Ghost Scepter, and I also don't think, wow, Ghost Scepter is so bad this game. He's just, like, in the middle of the pack. That's why he's un under moderate. I declare it so. I made this list. Windranger, she does have Shackle Shot, she does have Power Shot to do a lot of damage to you if she hits you, but the thing is, she can sort of see you, like, you might see her charging it and just dodge the Power Shot. The Shackle Shot, it's like, okay, you know, I get stunned, but the reason why I think it's still pretty good against Windranger is because she wants to Focus Fire you, like, uh, just delete a support, and with that, you can buy yourself some time. Um, so I think it's pretty good in that regard. Winter Wyvern, if you can see her coming in to ult you and you can Ghost Scepter, either ulting you or the guy next to you, if you can Ghost Scepter before that, then you can't auto attack or be auto attack. So if it targets you, you won't die. And if you if you use it and your buddy gets um, ulted, you can't auto attack and damage your teammate. You're a support, so you, you probably weren't the contributing factor there anyways, but, you know, it's a little bit. Now, you will take some extra damage from, like, the Splinter Blast or uh, the Burn from Arctic, but... Not really how she kills you, so it's kind of whatever. Um, and this is where, like, an E-Blade, like, upgrading it to an E-Blade in the late game is pretty good, like we talked about. Witch Doctor, these will still damage you, and this can actually, like, really hurt you. So if you don't use Ghost Scepter right away, this that might actually, it might be worse. But if you see him channeling Death Ward really quickly, and, and or if he has an Aghanim, so it's bouncing around, Ghost Scepter will not let, will prevent you from getting hit by the Ghost, from the Death Ward. So... That part's good if you use it fast enough. But if he maledicts you, death wards you, and it does like half your health, and then you use Ghost Scepter, maledict will probably finish you off. So be really careful about that. And then we talked about Enchantress, where I just, I forgot this dispelled you, so ignore what I said about having it originally here. We've now adjusted it, so it's all good. Beastmaster, another hero that frequently buys Helm of the Dominator or Necronomicon, which means he can just um, purge the Ghost Scepter. Uh, Wild Axes is actually now changed to Magical too, so there's that. And he has a stun. Not that he would probably use... Well, that's not fully true. He, depending on who you are, he may roar you as a support. Like, you might be that important. Um, so there is that. It won't protect you from that. Brewmaster, lots of magical damage from his spells. Um, and Primal Split, when he uses that, he actually has... I forget what it's called. It might actually just be called Dispel, but he can Dispel the, the uh, Ghost form. So in that regard, it's like no good. And he still has ways to target you. Like he has the targetable stun. He has, um, he could cyclone you. So Ghost Scepter against Brewmaster is just not very effective. Centaur, Warrunner, you are going to take so much damage from Double, da from double Edge. Um, it already does a significant amount of damage. And if you are a, a flimsy support that Ghost Scepters, he's just going to demolish you. His Hoof Stomp does magic. He can run through you with Stampede. Um, his right clicks hurt, but it's not really... I don't know. He's just there to, like, chunk you down, stun you, and Ghost Scepter does not save you from that. Clockwork, you're not getting out of cogs. All his stuff is magic damage. No good. Doom, he does have this sizable right click that, like, burns you, which you can avoid if you Ghost Scepter fast enough. But this alone is not enough to kill you. Usually what kills you is the Scorched Earth burn damage plus the right clicks. So you'll buy yourself a bit of time with the Ghost Scepter so that you're not taking damage from the Infernal Blade. Um, but you might still die. 
Now, without being able to be Infernal Bladed, you can actually um, go Scepter and TP out. That's pretty good. Be um, you may still get Doomed, so it's pure damage, so you're not really going to take Amplified damage from that. Um, but with Devour, he could just take that Purge ability, which means he can Purge you if he's a core. Actually, it doesn't matter. If he's a core of support and he wants to kill you, he can purge you and kill you. And if he wants to kill someone else, but he sees his core is killing you and you ghost bladed, he could still purge you and like, hey, feel free to kill him now. And he's like, oh, thanks. And he kills you. So it's not so great against Doom. Um, Dragonite. Actually, why is Dragonite here? Dragonite's moderate. Some mistakes on this list. Dragonite has some magic damage, has a stun. Um, So it... You're probably not going to get away, but you'll survive for four seconds because a lot of his damage is right clicks. Um, Earth, Spirit, just just does a bunch of magic damage. A lot of it comes from Magnetize, which will kill you. Um, so you're just you're not going to get away. He can still stun you. He can still hit you with a ton of uh, damage, silence you, all of that. Um, we wouldn't recommend it. Lots of stuns on Earthshaker, which are all magical and don't need to target you in terms of a right click. Like, yeah, he can't hit you with a totem, but who cares? So he's just going to, like, repeatedly stun you, and you're not going to get away. Elder Titan can uh, Echo Stomp to cancel, and if the Astral Spirit is next to you, um, you're actually going to take so much magic damage. It is absurd. So you have to be really careful about going into Ethereal if there's an Elder Titan in the game. Fortunately, Elder Titan is, like, one of the least picked heroes in the world. So most of you will not have to worry about that in your pubs. Huskar cannot auto attack you, but if he, so like, here's the deal. You see him ulting towards you, you go scepter. You're going to take a ton of damage from life break. You let life break hit you first. Then you go scepter. That'll buy you four seconds. And then he'll just hit you a bunch and kill you. If he has already hit you with burning spears, and then you go scepter, you're going to take extra burn damage. Yeah. He can't auto attack you in that time, but, like, that's why it doesn't feel great against Huskar, because it's like, I can't use it preemptively. I have to use it after I get hit, but before I'm auto-attacked, um, it's like this fine timing that you have to wait for, and it's like, I'm almost dead already anyways, and I'm taking all this burn damage. Kanka, you won't take cleave damage, but he has a lot of ways to still kill you with the combo. You're not going to escape him. That's why it's moderate. Phoenix, all magic damage. Going to hurt you a lot, plus you can't hit the egg which is pretty bad if you're against a Phoenix. Um, you you want to buy items that help you kill the egg, and Ghost Scepter actually just hurts you against all the spells, and you can't hit the egg. Now, of course, you may still need to Ghost Scepter some games, like against Ricky or TA or whatever, and there's a Phoenix in the game. You're just going to have to know to be a bit careful when you use it. Pudge doesn't care. He still does. His main damage is just walking on top of you and rotting, not even auto-attacking, so he doesn't care if he's a core. Um, and then he dismembers you for extra damage. He's like, cool. Sand King, you know, doesn't care if he can't auto-attack you. He's just going to do a bunch of magic damage to you. Snapfire, same deal. Who cares if she can't little shredder you? That's not what she does. She does magic damage, and then she uses Mortimer's Kisses. And you're going to take a lot of extra damage. Oh, boy. Spirit Breaker, can't hit you to bash, but has two ways to target you still and stun you. Um, Sven, we talked about, you won't take cleave damage, but... You can still be stunned, and if you get stunned before you get Ghost Scepter, he'll probably just kill you anyways if he's got, like, God Strength and Crit going. And if he has the Dispel talent from level 15, you are in real danger. Timbersaw actually does all pure damage, so that's why Ghost Scepter, like, it actually has no impact on Timbersaw. He doesn't care. It's like, okay, I'll do the, I'll do the same amount of damage, whatever. All that changes that you can't auto-attack me, which you could have done by just not auto-attacking. Um, so Timbersaw, you don't have to consider it against him. So really, it's not that he's like bad. It's like the item does nothing against him. Um, so it's more like you're considering the other teammates and you don't have to factor in Timbersaw. So we'll put him under moderate. Like, I don't think if I see him, I don't buy Ghost Scepter. If I see him, I don't not buy Ghost Scepter. So yeah, we'll stick him in moderate. Tiny, yes, you can dodge the tree grab but he can still like toss avalanche you. So you're probably not getting away. And the toss avalanche combo is probably enough to kill you anyways. Um, and if not, he'll just finish you off after. So it's okay, but not, not really. <laughs> Treant, 
It's not really here you have to buy Ghost Scepter for, but he does make it a little more annoying to get because all his stuff is magic damage and he doesn't need to... He can just root you. It was a little better before when he had the uh, the change nature's guys, which required him to auto attack you to root. Um, but now that that's gone, I don't know. If I'm a tree and protector, I don't care that you go scepter. I can't auto attack you, sure, but most of my damage is from like all my spells and meteor hammer. Underlord, it's bad because he can pit you, so he can stop your TPs, um, and then you're gonna take a bunch of damage to firestorm. He can't auto attack you in that time, sure, but you're just going to take so much magic damage. Undying, you can't attack the tombstone, so it's no good. Um, but you can also take... <laughs> you're going to take so much damage from Soul Rip. Um, but he can still decay you and everything, so he doesn't really care. Uh, Arc Warden is a little mixed. He is heavily right-click um, focused, but he does have two spells which really hurt supports. And so if those are on you and you ghost form, you won't die to right-clicks, but you might die to spells because he can, he can spam these out. Um, plus, if it's in the late game, he doesn't... He'll buy Scythe, he'll buy whatever, Nullifier, he doesn't care. He'll use them on you. And then, what does Ghost Form do? So it's like... It's okay, but not not really that good. Ember can still root you. Can't hit you with Slide of Fist, but can still burn you down with all his magic damage, so... Luna, it's nice because you're not going to get hit by the Glaives. You won't take damage from that, so like... A big issue is when you're trying to defend your base, your tower, your tier 3 tower falls, so she's hitting the racks, and the glaives are bouncing everywhere, and that's just killing you. So you can go Scepter then. But if she ults on top of you, you are dead. You are so dead. Dead, dead, dead. Um, so depending how far you are from her, it might be okay, might not be okay. Meepo, he can't auto-attack you, but he'll just poof on top of you, and he'll kill you that way, so... Marana, same deal. She'll do extra Star Storm damage, and she'll stun you if you try to TP out. Um, Morphling, he buys an E-Blade to use it on you before using Agility or um, Adaptive Strike. So if you use Ghost Form, he's like, oh, thanks. You just saved me having to use my own E-Blade. I'll just do extra damage with all of this. Um, so yeah, you can dodge his like right clicks, but he'll probably just kill you with the magic damage. So no good. Nyx... He can just stun you the whole time. You know, he's not really a hero where you have to worry about it, where it's like, oh no, the Nyx is on me, and he's killing me with right clicks. Like, who's ever said that? It's very uncommon. Um, so it's just not very good against him. Shadow Fiend, he just has a lot of magic damage to use on you if you go Scepter. If you try to go Scepter and TP out, he'll just stand on top of you and ult. I mean, he doesn't have to for his support, but he could. He also frequently buys Yules, so he'll just Yules you when you do that. Um, Venomancer can't auto attack you the plague wards can't hit you but boy are you going to take so much magic damage from whatever what's already been applied to you it's so much that it's probably just not worth it the right clicks that you're getting like the right clicks from plague warg and Venomancer are not what does the damage to you it is the poison so so long as something has already hit you it like defeats the purpose Um, Viper same deal where anything he's already done to you magic wise is just going to be further amplified and like the right clicks are not the biggest deal. Ancient Apparition, do you just want to die even faster? Ice Vortex increases your magic damage that um, his team does. So if you go Scepter on top of Ice Vortex, goodbye. A single spell will kill you. Bane, a lot of ways still um, hit you. Um, Brain Sap will do extra damage. Uh, Nightmare to prevent you from TPing, Fiend's Grip to prevent you from TPing, plus extra damage during that time. Not that Banes usually target other supports, but still. Um, Bat Rider, he, you are welcome to try it. He will burn you down so fast. It is absolutely useless against Bat Rider, in my opinion. Um, Chen, like Chen doesn't do damage himself, so he doesn't really. You don't really consider it about Chen, but the issue is he can take control of creeps, take control of um, like a centaur to stun you so you can't TP out, a dark troll to net you, but he can also get that um, purge creep as well. So it doesn't feel so great against Chen. But the thing is, Chen's usually not on top of supports, right? It's usually the reason you're buying Ghost Scepter is because some enemy carry is like jumping you and killing you, and Chen is not usually there. And so you don't fully have to consider Chen um, when thinking about when you need to go Scepter. 
Crystal Maiden, all magic damage, doesn't care. She's happy to have you go Scepter. Darkseer loves to just Iron Shell walk on top of you, can cancel TPs. Would love for you to do that. Now, the illusions, if they're killing you, yeah, you could ghost form, but that's like a different issue. Ghost Scepter against Dark Willow, not good. Bedlam can still hit you, even though it looks like an auto attack. Um, and so the amplified damage, like, she could already solo kill a lot of people, but if you Ghost Scepter, she's going to be able to, like, kill you and then move on to the next target. So be really careful about using a Ghost Scepter near her. Disruptor, all magic damage, prevents you from TPing, doesn't let you escape the wall. Enigma, Malefice. It's not about the damage, it's about the fact that you just can't TP the entire duration. You won't take right click, sure, but like, who cares? Um, Midnight Pulse you'll take extra damage from, and the Black Hole, you won't, it won't help you survive that. So, um, Grimstroke technically has a stun, but if you, if you actually start TPing before he's cast Inkswell, it won't hit you. Um, but that applies even without the Ghost Scepter. So, the rest of these aren't so good. Plus, if you're Ghost Sceptered, you can't take off the Phantom's Embrace or use it on, um, or like help attack someone else who's been Phantom's Embraced. Um, so it's actually kind of a uh, not useful against Grimstroke. Plus, he wants to soul bind people so that people can single target spell cast on those guys. So you're just like asking to take a bunch of extra damage. Invoker, just a bunch of magic damage, right? Uh, Jakiro, magic damage. Coddle, you're not able to hit Will O Wisp, and he has magic damage. Lashrak, magic damage. Lich, magic damage. Lena, magic damage. Lion, gonna finger you the second you E Blade. Necro, you're gonna take so much damage from his magic damage. You see how easy this is? These are heroes that all have magic damage. <laughs> They're not good for Ghost Scepter. Whoa! Ogre, magic damage stuns you. Though the benefit is Bloodlust, if you, uh, like, say he bloodlusts a core that's coming to kill you. The Ghost Scepter's kind of good there. And Ogre's not usually, like, way in the front um, jumping you. And he's not, like, running around with the Clinks. The Clinks might be bloodlusted, but Ogre's probably not running around with him. Um, so Ghost Scepter's still fine. Oracle can purge off the Ghost Form. Not good against him. Plus, you're going to take extra damage from the Purifying Flames. And actually, I'm not sure, but I think... I think that might actually cancel out because technically the heal is a little better than the damage, but if you were E-bladed, I actually think he can just pure flying flames you for free, and he'll do more damage than he heals. Puck. Lots of burst. Magic damage. That's it. Pugna. Go ahead. Whatever. You know, he might still Decrepify you, because his Decrepify is better than Ghost Scepter, and I actually, to be honest, I don't know if it stacks. Um, but I don't think it matters. He just does so much magic damage that whether it stacks or not, you're dead if you willingly ghost form yourself next to a Pugna. Um, plus, you won't be able to hit his uh, ward. Queen of Pain, lots of magic damage. But usually this magic damage is not enough to kill you, and she does need to right-click you a bit, so maybe a Ghost Scepter is okay. But you are still going to take a lot of damage from her spells, and you're not going to escape because she can just chase you. But she doesn't really have a way to cancel TPs, as we learned in my video recently. The ult does not work. Um, so it can be passable against Queen of Pain, because she does kind of need to right-click. Rubik, all magic damage. Doesn't feel good. He does a lot of magic damage, plus he can disrupt you when you use your Ghost Scepter, so that uh, he wastes your Ghost Scepter duration. He gets this spell for free. You had to buy that Ghost Scepter. Shadow Shaman, lots of stuns, lots of magic damage. You won't take damage from the Mass Serpent wards. I guess that's good. But everything else you have to be worried about. So, okay, I will clarify. So this can be good where, like, he alts and then gets killed in the fight or something. And now you want to run in, but you're being zoned by the wards. That's when you can ghost form and run through it. But that's, like, that's a benefit of having a Ghost Scepter and not, to me a justification of buying a Ghost Scepter. So if I already had a Ghost Scepter for some other reason, then it's like, oh, here's this extra use. I can use it here. But I also have to be careful of using it if Shadow Shaman's still alive. Um, if that makes sense. Skywrath, tons of magic damage. Literally does not care. In fact, it only benefits him if you Ghost Scepter. Storm Spirit, 
kind of similar to Queen of Pain, where he usually needs a couple right clicks to actually finish up the kill. But if you ghost form, the issue is you have to ghost form before he comes out of ball lightning, probably. But if he hits you with ball lightning and your ghost form, you're going to take a ton of damage. Um, and if you don't preemptively do it and he gets into range of you, then he'll electric vortex you before you can ghost form. And then you're not going to be able to use it and he'll be able to right click you a couple times and then hit you with a static remnant. Uh, so it doesn't feel good to buy against Storm Spirit. Techies, all magical, doesn't care. Plus, you can't auto attack his mines, which is a little annoying. Um, Tinker, doesn't care. He just bursts you from afar anyways. And so Ghost Form, you're just going to take extra damage from the heat-seeking missiles. Void, you won't take the auto attack from Astral Step, but literally everything else will get amplified. Zeus, do I even have to tell you guys? Does magic damage. And you can't auto attack Nimbus. You don't want to buy it against Zeus. That is all of them. Woo! An hour. Hour and six minutes. So yeah, in summary, we're going to end on this screen where it's good against physical damage dealers. Not so good against magic dealers. And you're just going to have to make that decision on your own. Whether the enemy team... When the enemy team is like all physical damage, very easy choice. When they're all magical damage, very easy choice. When it's that in-between, you're going to have to ask yourself, how am I dying in these fights? Is it the physical damage core is picking me off every single time? Then yeah, a Ghost Scepter, pretty good. Is it the magic damage guy who's just bursting me randomly in fights? Ghost Scepter, not going to help me. You just have to ask yourself, um, because the same lineup in different games from people playing differently could really change whether you buy a Ghost Scepter or not. And that's why this item is a little complicated, um, but hopefully that helped. If it didn't, let me know and we'll tackle it again. Um, we'll try to do some like add-ons or something, but I, I think that hopefully helped you guys. But that's it. Have a good day.